All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I've been going over the PowerPoint presentations from Murox HTML5 and CSS3 3rd Edition for the AWD Application and Web Development 1000 class. I am now beginning Chapter 16 of 19, which talks about the jQuery user interface, the jQuery UI, which I showed at the end of the last video, and some jQuery plugins. So we have three applied objectives and seven knowledge objectives. Our applied objectives, given in HTML documents, use the jQuery user interface to enhance the page so that it includes accordions and or tabs and or buttons and or dialogues. Given an HTML document, enhance the page so that it uses the jQuery UI Lightbox plugin and or the jQuery UI BX slider plugin and or the JX or the jQuery rather UI cycle 2 plugin. Use the internet to find jQuery plugins that you can use for other functions. In general terms, describe the jQuery UI and the four features it provides. Explain why you might want to build a custom JI, jQuery UI download. Describe the three files that J, the jQuery UI requires. In general terms, describe how to use the jQuery UI for things like accordions, tabs, buttons, and dialogues. In general terms, explain what a plugin is. In general terms, describe the process of finding and using a plugin. And in general terms, describe how to use jQuery plugins for features like light boxes, carousels, and slideshows. So I already showed you this. This is jQueryUI.com, the UI, which stands for user interface. Here are the four different types of features that are provided by the jQuery UI. Those are widgets, which are accordions, tabs, date pickers, etc. Themes, there's 24 predefined themes as well as what's called a theme roller where you can create your own theme. A theme is implemented by a CSS style sheet. There are interactions, draggable, droppable, resizable, etc. and effects for animation and the like. Remember, just like jQuery, which is a free open source JavaScript library, all right, so we just went over what the four different type, types of widgets are. The jQuery website is at jQueryUI.com. Okay, now I do want to mention if you take a look, and we did kind of go out there just a bit ago that if I do go out to the jQueryUI.com, you'll see that it's broken up into an interaction section, a widget section, an effects section, and a utility section. If you add these, there's about 30 things total. I don't care how many exactly there are, but I'm just telling you that. So I already showed you the accordion, but let's look at a couple of the ones that are in here, or at least one of them. So let's try the sortable. All right, notice that with sortable, I can move things around. Sort them in any order I want, etc. So again, how do I do that? You go to View Source, you highlight everything that's in there. It's only 37 lines in this case, so that works out well. Come in, put it in. You notice again we have the HTTP miss colon missing here and HTTP colon missing here. It may work without it, but at least I know that in the past, unless you came back in and put that in, it did not work. So let's save this. We will save it to the desktop as sortable.html. All right, and let's run it. There's never any guarantee that it'll work. We might have to make some changes to it, but well, it appears as though it's working. Okay, and we could go and play around with a lot of these things, but this is an excellent way for you to learn, for lack of better words, what's going on in here. All right, because you can go in yourselves now that we've done this, you can go out to jQueryUI.com, whoops, and you can add and change and take a look at any of the things that are in here. Now, if you want to come in and build your own custom jQuery UI library, you can add as many of these things 
as you want to. So this figure, really that figure there, is showing you how to build a custom jQuery UI library. So from the home page, you click the download link. So let's take a look at what's in there. So let's go to the home page, which was right here. All right, and they tell you to click the download link. There it is. All right. So that was step one. Then this will take you to the download builder page. Select or deselect anything that you're interested in. So if you want to download it, so let's go back here. So notice it's selecting everything that's in here. So if I don't want something, if I don't want the focusable selector, I just click there and it says, are you sure you want to remove it? following components depend on it all right so it's trying to show you and I'll just say cancel but I can just add or remove I could remove everything in here and then add it back piecemeal as well if that's indeed what I would rather do then if you want to select the theme for the download you use the drop down list at the bottom of the page so let's look at that theme all right now, I don't know what most of these are, but again, how do you learn? You download one or two or a few of them and take a look at it. So if I wanted to do the smoothiness, boom, I would do that. After you select a theme or design your own, click the download button to download a zip folder that contains all of your jQuery UI files. So I come in here as we just looked at. Right, I'm just going to grab everything. I put my theme in there. I'm going to click download. And it's downloading for me right here. So if I go down to my and look in my downloads folder, there it is. It's 425K. So I now have all of the stuff in the jQuery UI is now available to me for use in my program. So I'm just going to cut this from here. I'm going to go back to my desktop. I'm going to put it into my desktop. So I'll paste it in here. Come on, come on and paste. There it is. And then I'm going to extract it. Should literally just take a matter of seconds. So there's everything that I have available to me. Here's my index file. I don't know what's in there, but it shows me all of my different components. So these are all things that I'm now able to come in there and use. All right. Some of these you've already seen. Now, again, I am more concerned right now that you understand how to go in and how to do this. Not so much why you do it, not so much all of the particulars, because we will go through that in class when we go over the JavaScript portion of the class. All right, so I very quickly just showed you how you can do that. This is how you would include those downloaded files in your application. So you'll have to bring in the associated CSS files and any associated JS files. Again, there's the accordion. Okay. How do you use the documentation? Well, I've already shown you a little of this, but as it says in the left-hand sidebar, you click on the widget, all right, to display its documentation. So if you click here, it's going to, let's go back and just do it. So again, we're just gonna keep going back and forth here. But if I click here and I'm gonna go back I've already done that download, so if I go back to here, come on, I don't want to do the download. And so there's back at the jQuery UI. So let's say I want to find out more information about the date picker. So I click here, and boom, there's my information on it. It says, do you want to learn more about the date picker? Check out the API. So I click there, and it shows me the date picker widget 
shows me all the different things I can use with it, the associated methods and the options. And, you know, there's a couple of code examples or at least one or two. All right. So that's how you learn is you just go out to the software and it, this isn't the kind of thing that you would want to ever think about memorizing, but it's the kind of thing you want to be able to go out to it, look at it, use it if you're if you need to. All right. So there's the accordion, the HTML for it, the jQuery for it. There are tabs. So in other words, there's a tab. You click here, you'll get different stuff. And here you click here, you'll get different stuff in there. The thing about using tabs is you only have a limited amount of screen resources. That's why a lot of people like to use tabs. Here's a button widget. And they'll show you the HTML and the jQuery. There it is right there. So you, it opens up. If you click here, this will close then. You'll notice that almost always for just about all of these, the actual jQuery will be very small. There won't be a lot to it. All right. The next thing that's discussed in here are jQuery plugins, the last two, four, six, eight, ten, ten pages of the chapter. And the author says, how do you find out about jQuery plugins? Well, actually, it's even easier than this because if you just type in jQuery plugin, okay, so if I go over here and literally come in here, we're done with the UI now, so let's type in jQuery plugins. And it'll take me first to the jQuery plugin registry, which is https colon slash slash plugins.jQuery.com. And here is the registry, and you can see there's 500 UI plugins. There are 482 jQuery plugins, etc. I haven't added this, but my guess is it'd be somewhere around 2,000 free plugins that you can use. If you want to learn how to build your own plugin, you can go out to learnjQuery.com and it'll show you how to do it. So a plugin is a jQuery application that's designed to extend the functionality of jQuery. They all require the use of the core jQuery library. Now, there's some websites that you can use. I already showed you the plugins, jQuery.com, but there are other ones as well. Plugins are available for, for literally hundreds of different kind of web applications. So there are, there are plugins for um, slideshows if you want to do something special customized slideshows, carousels, data validation. Usually you can find a plugin for doing almost anything you want. It's probably going to result in you having less work to do than writing it yourself. But occasionally, there, you know, you'll have to write one yourself. There isn't a plugin that does what it is you want to do. All right. So they go through the six step process. First, study the documentation. This is if you're going to use a built in plugin. Number one, study the documentation for the plugin so you know the HTML and CSS it requires. Number two, all right, so going over these steps then again, number one, study the documentation so you know which HTML and CSS is required. Number two, get the URLs for the plugins on a CDN if possible. Number three, you code the link elements for any CSS files required and for any JavaScript files required. Number four, if the download for a plugin includes an images folder, make sure you've got it set up. Number five, code the associated HTML and CSS for the plugin. Number six, if necessary, write any jQuery code. 
Some plugins can be accessed via a CDN, but most must be downloaded and stored on your server. So this chapter ends by talking about three of the most popular plugins. Okay. First, it talks about the Lightbox plugin for images. Here's a light box, and the idea with a light box is that you click on a picture and then it gets bigger, and it's got an X here, and you can click to close it again. So the light box plugin can be used to display larger versions of thumbnail images. When the user clicks on a thumbnail image within a set of images, the rest of the page is darkened, and a larger version of the image is displayed. The Lightbox download includes a CSS file, a plugin file, and an image folder. The HTML for a Lightbox consists of a series of image elements with an A or anchor elements. The Data Lightbox attributes of the anchor elements activate Lightbox. These should be unique for independent images, but the same for a group of images. The data title attributes of the anchor elements can be used to provide captions. Now that's one way you can do it. And again, it's not going to probably involve a whole boatload of code. Next, they show the BX slider for creating a carousel. In this case, it's going to display two images at a time. So probably there's a total of six images in here. If you click the next button, it'll show you two more image, then two more images. If you click it again, it'll go back to the beginning type of an idea. So the BX slider plugin makes it easy to develop a carousel. The HTML is basically just an unordered list with one list item for each slide that contains images or other HTML. If you go out to the BX slider website, there's a lot of examples in there and options, etc., and it does a lot of explanation. If the slide images contain title attributes, the captions option will make them captions. And the BX slider download consists of a JavaScript file, a CSS file, and an images folder that contains images that are used. Finally, the last thing that's discussed in the chapter here, starting on page 552, is the Cycle 2 plugin. The Cycle 2 plugin treats the children of a div as the slides. These children are usually image elements, but they can be div elements that contain both text and images. The best way to include this plugin is to use the GitHub CDN for it. I think that is shown. There we go. The Cycle 2 website provides demos and summaries, etc. if you need to use those as well. To set options for a slideshow, you can code data cycle attributes for the div element. To provide captions below the slides, you can code data cycle title attributes. All right. That's pretty much it for this chapter. When we go into the next chapter, and the next chapter is it for the JavaScript, we will be talking about jQuery Mobile. Now back in chapter 8 we talked about responsive web design, but now we'll learn another approach to providing for providing web pages for mobile devices. We'll talk about that next.